Okay, breaking news in the world of the PSL. Um, from a club that usually doesn't have too many of these type of stories. Now, Mamadou Sundowns has been in the news quite a lot uh, over the past few weeks for the normal stuff. It's transfer stuff. Uh, Bongani Zongo left the club. Serino's leaving the club. Um, there's been some movements in that regard. Now, a story dropped this morning, um, dropped by Lorenz Koller, that said, uh, ooh, well, dropped by Super Journal first, and uh, Lorenz Koller that speaks about Coach Rulani uh, being being released or there's talk that he might not come back as the coach of Mamadou Sundowns. Um, there's also been a story that he didn't show up for the first day of preseason, prompting again uh, the rumors to become a lot stronger about him leaving the club, which is a, a huge development in terms of Mamadou Sundowns. Mamadou Sundowns usually has everything buttoned up. Mamadou Sundowns is um, the flagship team of the PSL uh, currently. So this is a very interesting build-up. Now, I've had a couple of shows myself where we've spoken about whether Ukos Rulani is the right man. We've spoken about um, whether Mamadou Sundowns needs to evolve or start becoming as ruthless as uh, what they need to be in order to go and, and, and compete with the North African guys, right? So, I want to speak about this from a couple of different vantage points. Um, we'll first start off with the results. Would you sack a coach um, for winning the league, almost finishing invincible and having an AFL? I asked before if that was enough because it looks a lot like uh, what they'd previously had. Mamelodi Sundowns is almost 10 years removed uh, from winning the Champions League almost 10 years removed, they won it in 2016. So at what point would a club like Mamelodi Sundowns need to say that it's Champions League or bust, especially with the people that you're competing with? Think about the Al-Ali's, it's all business there. It's all business. They play to win, and if you're not a coach that wins, they let you go. Now Mamelodi Sundowns has been a winning team in South Africa. But part of the, the question with Imamalu Di Sundowns and them becoming a modern team uh, with Tate Petris, of course, having to abdicate his role um, in order to allow uh, Kopi to come in, in order for him to go into the CAF president's role. Um, we've seen Abu Fleming Berg, the technical director of Imamalu Di Sundowns, um, start moving Sundowns towards a more sustainable business model, moving Sundowns towards a way where their transfers are done in a certain way, right? And one might say that the way that Mamaruji Sundowns had been running previously was a family club. Uh, Upizo, when, when Coach Pizzo came in, he had his hand on the club and directed every single thing at the club. Transfers, uh, personnel, all of that stuff to put them in a place where they could bring in a technical director. Now, does that still gel with what a modern quote-unquote football club would want to do? Would they allow Coach Rulani the type of control over transfers, especially after we've heard him uh, complain? You know, we've heard him say that he wanted um, Lars Fels Felsvik, if I'm not mistaken, um, the, the, the tall striker, who, the tall South African striker. He wanted a striker of that build in his team, and according to him, the club denied it. Right. Um, there's been stories about Abo Zungu leaving and Abo Sirino staying past uh, uh, their time because the club wanted them and Coach Rulani didn't. Right. So there's been a lot of rumors and stories swirling around uh, um, the control of the club. And I think, in my opinion, what came to a head, what came to a head was that they, they clashed. It's a clash of two different styles. Right. It's a clash of uh, a club that wants to uh, uh, be data driven, that wants to have a team of people that run the club, that want to have a sporting director that actually does the job of a sporting director. Whereas then you have a coach who wants his control. And I think part of the problem here, honestly speaking, is that on the one hand, the technical director of Fleming has a mandate. You have to build out the club. You have to make sure that this club is viable for the next five years. You have to, in some cases, modernize the club, right? And that goes hand in hand with maybe Utopi, Chairman Utopi stepping in, right? It, it goes hand in hand with his goals and ambitions as the new chairman, as somebody who might be trying to put his spin on a club that his father made successful, right? So you have that drive, 
Then on the other hand, uh, you have a coach Rulani. A coach Rulani who has been at this club uh, for more than, for almost 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, if not more. He was under 19 coach. He was brought in by coach Pizzo. He was co-coaches with uh, coach Mangoba. He had left at some point and came back. And then he was given uh, the title of being the head coach. Now, when you look at it, right, again, one hand, you've got this modern club. And on the other hand, you've got a guy who can make an argument that nobody understands the fabric of what this club is right now better than I can. Nobody can tell me about the history of Mamelodi Sundowns' recent success. I had a hand in it. I've got a Champions League medal. The previous guy picked me. For all intents and purposes, I may have taken this club a step or two forward. Not all the way, but a step or two forward from where it was. Surely then I should have a bigger say within the club. Surely then... You guys should listen to me a little bit more. And the way I see it is that management is going in one direction and Coach Rulani wanted to go into the future, but to go into his direction. And I think he needed certain control. And when you listen to the things that he was saying in the media, when you listen to, you know, when he spoke about how, please give me four years. He's spoken about how some of the players were not his decisions. He's spoken about how there's so much pressure with being the coach. There's so many games. There's so much preparation. There's so much he has to do. I think he was trying to drum, drum up support for himself outside the club. I think that things have not quite been going his way inside. I think he's spoken about disciplinary hearings or, or the club warning him for saying certain things and him getting into trouble for certain things. And I think when push came to shove and he asked and he drew a hard line in the sand for the things that he needed, he then found out that, you know, the club is not yours. The club is not built around you. The club has a road that the club has chosen to go down. And if you want to be part of it, this is what I think happened. If you want to be part of it, these are the boundaries and the rules that we have set as the club. And you'll have to follow them. And if you don't follow them, then look, you might as well leave. So the story is developing. We are unsure at the current moment whether um, he's going to be staying or leaving. Um, we're unsure what type of uh, conversations are being had within the club for this uh, specific thing. But this now brings me to um, the next part of this. Like I said, I did a video. Um, I'll link it somewhere here. I did a video speaking about a ruthless club. I, I, I did a video speaking about a club that has no faces and has requirements. I'm speaking about a club like an Al Ali where we all know the line. You could win the league as many times as you want to win it, but if you don't get the big chip, we don't care. And we will move you on swiftly. And we will go find somebody else who can do the job. I think at some point, Mamadou Sundowns needed to evolve into that sort of club. That sort of club that doesn't give you chances. When Coach Lani came out and he said four years, Al Ali would never give you a four-year contract. Would never give you four years, sorry, to, to, to get right, to go and do the thing that we need. And after a decade of chasing that one big trophy, after a decade of chasing that one big trophy, how much more patience can you have? How much more patience can you see? Can you, can you live with? And I know there's an expanded Club World Cup. Coach Pito spoke about it last time where he needed to win the Champions League in order to go into the, Cham in, in order to go into the Club World Cup. Now people can just, you know, uh, take part by coming third or fourth or having as much points as they can have and doing it that way. But it's still not the big, uh, the, the big trophy. And at some point it gets boring to be the best team in Africa, quote unquote, but yet you can't win the big chip. That you only have one. When the people you're competing with have five, four, five. Al-Ali has 12, if I'm not mistaken now. 
Champions Leagues in their pocket. But Tipi Mazembe have five. But Zamalek have five. So can you really call yourself a big dog if you can't go out and win that? And I think that pressure came to a head, came to a head um, in this case. What's going to be interesting, I think, and the question we should all ask going forward, for me, is how does the leadership of Mamelodi Sundowns look going forward? How does it look? You've sided with uh, uh, your management over your coach, and now you've got a TD that's got uh, uh, a, a high amount of power. Will he be held accountable the same way the coaches were held accountable? Because we have technical directors in uh, uh, SA. We have them in our local football. But those guys are usually nameless and faceless and never face any responsibility or accountability for what happened. So if Coach Rulani's mandate was to win the Champions League and that wasn't done, does that mandate now fall onto Fleming's head, Fleming Berg's head, the technical director? Does it fall onto his team's head in terms of that management team? What happens when you bring in another coach? Elsewhere in the world, elsewhere in the world, a technical director gets fired along with his coach. You've made the decision to bring in somebody. You have not done what needed to be done. You know what? We're moving you both out. What type of pressure is going to be on the coach that is coming in next? And I'm talking internal pressure. Because if it's an internal coach like Umangoba, he's already been demoted for something, for, for getting similar results. He's already been demoted once. We've already seen him. Can he take the next step? And if he doesn't take the next step, would that be the end of internal coaches at Mamadi Sundowns? If you bring in an external coach who's not familiar with uh, uh, the, the... He's not familiar with Mamadi Sundowns, where everything goes, how they play, how they do this, and is brought in as a contractor. Can you lay the pressure at that person's head knowing now that they don't have the, the experience that Rulani has within Mamruji Sundowns. They don't have the experience that Mangoba has within Mamruji Sundowns. And now we would know that they don't have the type of control over transfers, over player personnel, over coaches. What does Mamruji Sundowns look like a year or two or five, a year or two or five years from now? Have they changed that structure completely? Are we seeing more Fleming Bergs within the ranks who are people who are brought in by the club to do a job? And if they don't do the job, they get moved on. Are we still going to see family people? Michael Loftman was brought in by Coach Rulani. Does he stay? Does he go? Is he next in line in the same way? I have so many questions about where this goes and for Coach Rulani as well. This is going to be one of the times where he's going to have to go out into the world and have his record speak for him. I don't know if he's going to have a pizza to speak for him. I don't know if he's going to have a Mamadou Sundowns to speak for him. I don't know if, if, barring him going back to Pirates, I don't know if a family legacy can speak for him. He's going to have to go to clubs where he's going to be the new guy. And I'd imagine that he's, he's going to look at jobs should he leave. He's going to look at jobs, right, where uh, he's wanting, wanting to take the next step. Going into North Africa, going into the Gulf, going into Saudi, maybe going into Europe. And he's going to be the outside guy who's going to have to toe the line. Now, we all know Coach Rulani. Can he toe the line in those situations? Can he keep quiet? Can he allow a club to run it knowing that he's the outsider? And if he's not careful, to be honest with you, he might go the way of a coach pizza. If he's not careful, coach pizza left uh, Mamadou Sundowns with a cloud of controversy. We're seeing that there's a court, an ongoing court case there. He left Al Ali with a sea of controversy. 
um, they didn't know he was leaving, even though uh, he had been under immense pressure. So I don't know what type of backing that gives him when he goes out into the world. And will Coach Rulani have the same reference problem? You know the references when you go to a job. So it's a very interesting situation. We'll see how the story develops. We'll see um, if they can find themselves or if they lose themselves or what's going to happen over the next few days and how the next season is going to look. We're going to see what accountability really means at Mamadi Sundowns when it comes to management ranks now that, um, now that the guys who had been at Mamadi Sundowns are maybe leaving a little bit a little bit we'll see how much of that technical team is still around but i think mamelodi sundowns was at a crossroads and they've made a decision um i think Klopi had a very hard decision to make here a legacy that your father had built um or the modern way that you want to move forward and they chose structure over the coach I think Coach Rulani thought that he had more capital than he actually did or thought that he had enough capital for them to look past him not getting the big prize, to look past his outbursts in media, to look past the things that he says, to look past the fights, to look past a lot of different issues, um, the finals, all of that. And uh, I think a lesson to everybody you may not be as important as you think you are. And there's a limit to the things that you can do and say and act and whatever. Because it, how do I put it? It's great when you have somebody like Rulani on your side. But if he turns around and starts, you know, I don't know, acting out or maybe going against the code, how do you react to that? Anyway, guys, um, that was just a quick breakdown of what happened here. Um, well, my thoughts about what happened there. Um, coach Rulani is allegedly not going to be Mamadi Sundown's coach next season. I'll see you guys.